you know, ALS is a real tough one. We, honestly, until we know what causes it, it's going to be really hard to find a drug. So there's, there's a few clinical trials that are looking reasonable, but they're all the same. They're all like expanding lifespan by maybe five months, three months, or even a year, but they're not curing the disease. Until, until we understand more about what causes it, it's going to be very difficult to get a cure. That's why we started something called Answer ALS. We've taken a thousand patients, made IPS lines, and we've made motor neurons. Um, and those kind of studies, and there's other, there's other ways of doing this, but essentially that way you've got the patient motor neurons and you compare controls with ALS. Now you might start seeing some mechanisms, right? What's going wrong? Is it glutamate transport? Is it RNA? Is it DNA level proteins? What's causing ALS? And if we can model it using that technology, then I think we're going to get a lot closer to understanding the cause of ALS. Then we, then we can develop treatments to hit those, those mechanisms that we discovered now. Having said that, it's the same for Parkinson's actually and Alzheimer's. About 10% of ALS is genetic. So we know the cause of 10% of ALS. And so there are mutations. The one that causes up to 6% of all ALS is called c 9 orf 72 which is a mutation. That actually, it's a repeat expansion in one gene. But outside of those genetics, we need to understand more. And that's where I think the power of this technology is going to help. 